Eric Malilo, the Kenora MP, joins us to talk about the scene on national politics. It's James with Net News Ledger. Joining us for our weekly call on national politics is Kenora MP Eric Malilo. Eric, welcome back. Good morning, James. Let's hope that our internet does the trick this week so that we can actually do our interview. Absolutely. We've definitely had some fun with that, uh, trying to trying to make that work. But it's, uh, it speaks to the, uh, the issue we have across uh, a lot of rural and remote regions of, uh, uh, of the country. It's, uh, I mean, James, I think we've, we've spoke about this uh, a number of times already. We, we keep saying that uh, it's clear that internet is not um, uh, just a luxury. It is a necessity. And uh, we, you know, we, uh, we in uh, Northwestern Ontario are, uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do in order to uh, improve the internet and uh, the, the quality and the accessibility uh, for all of uh, the citizens in our region to ensure that we, um, uh, you know, we we can be sort of on par with the rest of uh, the country. So that's uh, obviously something I've been continuing to push on and uh, continuing to work towards. We were on a pretty major uh, Zoom call on on Thursday, and honestly, some of the First Nations, uh, you could just tell they were lagging. And then other mm-hmm. areas where, you know, issues were preventing uh, chiefs from actually signing on to the Zoom call. At one point, uh, you know, Kenora Rainy River MPP, Greg Rickford, Minister Rickford had to hold his phone near, you know, he got someone to call in, one of the chiefs, and they came through his Zoom just to speak on what the issue was. So there's, you know, it's, it, and there were some of the federal ministers on board on that. I asked the question on internet because it's been so key across the region to fix and that, you know, there's, there, everybody's saying they're doing something, but it's, I mean, as, as we've seen through the pandemic, the, the importance of the net for healthcare and for call it mental mm-hmm. health as well uh, is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you, you, you made the comment, everybody says they're doing something, but uh, we haven't seen a lot of results. Unfortunately, we've, uh, you know, there's been a lot of announcements from the federal government. They like to, uh, Allocate the funding, spend the money, but uh, when it, you know, it com- <laughs> excuse me, when it comes to uh, delivering those results and, and bringing that internet connection, internet connection to these uh, communities, to households, uh, it always seems that it's uh, a little bit short. There's, uh, you know, there's a number of communities in our riding. Uh, I've spoken about in the house, Madsen, Shoal Lake 39, but it's you know, Ear Falls. It's <laughs> almost every single community uh, has been uh, sort of impacted by this. We have uh, fiber optic cables that you know stop at the edge of a community and uh, the government hasn't funded uh, the last mile that's needed for example or they're not looking at some of the innovative solutions things like starlink or uh, other companies that are uh, you know they want to enter the market they want to be able to provide their service but right now with uh, a lot of government regulations it makes it a lot more difficult so that's uh, some of the barriers that uh, that we as the conservative party are hoping to break down we're also seeing that now with uh, rogers and shaw going to uh you know, Shaw being bought out by Rogers, we're going to end up potentially with one major giant for, for phone service and internet and television and communications across the country. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's mind boggling the sizes of these deals. Absolutely. And, and as I understand, the Competition Bureau is, uh, has already indicated that they're going to be sort of opening an investigation into that, uh, uh, that deal. So it's, it's definitely something we'll be watching closely. Now, shifting away a little bit, you know, here in in Thunder Bay, in Thunder Bay Superior North and Thunder Bay, Atacoke and Thunder Bay Rainy River, COVID numbers, especially in Thunder Bay, have gone through the roof. We have become the per capita Canadian leader in COVID-19. You know, we're we're still looking at vaccines. I interviewed Minister Hazu, the Minister of Health yesterday. She's saying that we're seven to eight weeks And, you know, once summer comes, things should be able to improve quite a bit. And and, I mean, we're all hopeful that's going to happen. But it's still a really frustrating journey for so many people. You know, the Northwestern Health Unit today came out um, with numbers. And and Ontario has just released this morning, just instantly now, about 1,700 plus cases of COVID in the province. The numbers are climbing up again. How are things in the Kenora area? Yeah, and uh, it's it's a good question. And, uh, you know, it's it's similar, of course, in Kenora. We, we don't have quite the spike as we're seeing um, next door in, in Thunder Bay, uh, but we uh, we do still have cases out there, and we and we've uh, seen that uh, uh, we're 
not out of the woods yet, uh, so to speak. And, and I think it just, uh, it speaks to the urgency for uh, why we need uh, vaccines and we need, uh, you know, hopefully need them uh, as quickly as possible. We have great frontline healthcare workers that have done a great job, um, you know, getting ready for the vaccines. They've already been, of course, vaccinating uh, many of the vulnerable populations, many of uh, the frontline workers themselves, uh, which is great. But, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned the frustration. Uh, we're hoping that uh, that uh, vaccines will be accessible to even more people very, very soon. Uh, the government, uh, the federal government keeps saying September uh, is when everyone will have uh, have access to a vaccine. Um, we, we hope that that's uh, uh, sort of the the latest possible date, and that they're just being uh, conservative in their estimate. Because um, you know that's if that's the case, we're losing another summer, we're losing another season for our businesses, and that's uh, you know it's frankly uh, just that much longer and that much more frustration that um, that Canadians, uh, the people in our region, will. Um, will have. So uh, we're, we're hoping to work with the government on that. We're wanting them to succeed when it comes to vaccines, because we know that uh, it's one of the most important tools, if not the most important tool to helping us overcome uh, COVID-19. One of the areas, and you allude to it there about the summer, is that we've got the, you know, the fishing camps and then moving toward the hunting camps, all the tourism outfits and all the tourism business that across the region is so important to our economy. And here they are unable to really plan because, you know, first of all, the border to the United States is still closed, mm -hmm. which I think is smart, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, we let in COVID. I mean, it didn't, it, it didn't originate here. It came in because people were traveling and, you know, the, the outfitters are the ones really going to be hurting through this. Absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, that's why I've been pushing for uh, more information. Uh, obviously, vaccines are important, but uh, as much information that, that the government can share uh, is obviously going to be helpful. We know that they've, uh, they've uh, sort of kicked the border closure another month. But uh, when you're a seasonal business, when you're you know, trying to plan for the season, uh, you need to know as much as possible, what it's going to look like in two months, three months, four months. So uh, we, we've been, and I've been especially pushing on the government to try and get some of that information. We know that they have uh, you know, many people, the ministers have many people in their departments. They have the public health officials that are uh, doing a lot of this modeling and projections, at least I hope they are, in order to, uh, um, you know, determine what this, uh, you know, uh, what our timeline might be for vaccinations, what our timeline might be for um uh, being able to reopen and, and uh, find a way to uh, safely welcome people back to the country. So with, without that clear information, it's going to be very, very difficult for our businesses, uh, particularly the seasonal businesses, uh, to plan for that uh, summer. So uh, hoping to see that in the budget. I've, I've had a discussion with uh, the Associate Finance Minister, Mona uh, Fortier, about this, uh, as well as uh, I've uh, previously raised it to uh, Christy Freeland as well. Uh, so uh, we're very much hoping that uh, some level of clarity, some metrics that the government is using to um, uh, to make their determinations about border closures and, uh, and other measures can be made public uh, so that uh, we can give our businesses and, and everyone across the country uh, a better idea of, of what we're working towards and, and how we're going to get there. That's, that's something I'm really noticing right now. People you know, they, and, it, and they, even in the, the news business, I mean, we're getting information and we're sharing it with our readers and our viewers. And, you know, we've, we've posted things from the Canada's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Tam. And then people are like on their social media, it's oh, blah, 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 you know, who cares? There's a lot of good information out there. But there's, there seems to be this growing feeling that we're not getting the, all the information that we need. Yeah, I mean, you made a good point. There is uh, definitely some good information out there, and I encourage everyone to uh, uh, to look at what is out there and uh, and definitely not disregard it uh, because it is important uh, uh, to know. Uh, but uh, you know, we do get that sense, and and I think uh, it's been clear that there's a lot of information the government uh, uh, hasn't shared with us. Maybe they don't have the information, but at the very least, they should be looking for that information when it comes to uh, you know figuring out um, how many people need to be vaccinated before we're uh, before we're going to be in a position where we might be able to reopen um, if people are vaccinated are there um, are there ways that 
certain restrictions can be um, uh, can be relaxed for those individuals or not. Uh, these are all questions that we're just trying to find the answers to. Uh, I don't profess to know what the correct answers should be, James, but uh, we're hoping that uh, we can work with the government and work with um, the departments and the officials that they have to try and figure out those answers as much as possible because there's a lot of unknowns for people. And of course, um, you know, unknowns is, is, is something that, um, uh, that causes a lot of stress. It's uh, very frustrating for people. So uh, we're trying to, uh, uh, you know, trying to work with the government to be as open as possible, but uh, unfortunately we haven't been able to get those answers yet. Now, one of the areas that we've been following um, for a long time, it, it, it's the transportation sector. And the government has not yet put any specific supports in for aviation, for rail. Uh, you know, we had the, the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Alder was in Lake Superior this week in the Thunder Bay Harbor breaking ice. So the marine shipping is coming together. Marine seems to be doing okay. The areas that seem to be struggling are aviation. I mean, Porter Air is still not flying. Uh, they've mm -hmm. they shut down. And it's been a year. And they've had, you know, the, the CERB for their employees, but you wonder how they're surviving. Um, you know, they've still got airplane payments. They've still got insurance on the planes at some level. You know, the maintenance just to bring those planes back into operation is going to be huge. And then we have a coalition forming of companies across Canada for intercommunity busing because not everybody flies and a lot of areas you know, our region specifically, you know, to go from Thunder Bay to Winnipeg, um, you spend more time at security in the airport than you do in the air for flying. You know, it's, yeah. it's a one hour flight. I remember my first time taking it where it was, you know, flying home and you got there at the same time you arrived or left, I'm sorry, you know, from Thunder Bay to Winnipeg. And there's got to be ways that the government can be helping these sectors. And the one with the with the bus transportation is that that's tied so tightly in parts of Canada to the tourism sector. Absolutely. And, that, and that's something that uh, you know, we, uh, we've we been pushing for as the Conservative Party is that um, you know, we, re we realize that there's been a lot of uh, a lot of programs that have been created, obviously, uh, as a response to COVID-19 for our businesses and, and individuals that have been impacted. But there's also been a lot of people that have fallen through the cracks, particularly when it comes to tourism, when it comes to hospitality when it comes to the airline sector and, and transportation more broadly, as you mentioned. So uh, we recently passed a motion in the, in the House that, um, that says that, that the House of Commons wants to see that sector specific support uh, in the budget. So um, how the government interprets that is up to them. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I think it's a pretty strong indication that uh, you have uh, all of the opposition parties uh, saying that um, these um, these sectors, when it comes to when it's transportation, tourism, and hospitality, have been impacted um, in many ways the most, uh, or, or, or you know, quite <laughs> quite aggressively by COVID nineteen. Yeah. Um, so we want to see specific support for them in this budget because uh, because they've fallen through the cracks. So again, we're, we're hoping to see that uh, as soon as possible. It's been uh, over over two years now without a budget. I, I, I uh, so we're hoping that uh, uh, that we'll see that and we'll see that plan. And, and uh, you know, I just I can't agree with you more uh, in the comments you made about how important that uh, transportation aspect is. The uh, message for people in in the Kenora riding that comes out this week. Yeah, I'll just say it's uh, it's been great to be back in the riding. We've had uh, some meetings in our offices. We've been doing passport clinics, and it's been great to uh, uh, connect with people once again. And uh, uh, you know, right now I'm actually, uh, um, uh, I'll be taking part in the virtual conservative convention, uh, this weekend. Uh, so I'm, uh, looking forward to, uh, that right after this call, I'll be, I'll be logging in there and, uh, you know, we're having a lot of good discussions about, uh, the direction of our party and then sort of building that, uh, um, those policies and, and the platform towards whenever the election is called. So I'm uh, looking forward to that and, um, it's just, uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's an honor to serve. I'll maybe just end it there. Thank you, Eric. We'll, we'll be talking again next week. To keep up to date, you have to subscribe. You have to hit that like button and hit the notification to stay in touch.